Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician, and today I'm going to define the hazard function in the context of survival analysis. In survival analysis, we're very interested in measuring the risk of an event happening at a particular point in time, where time is a continuous variable. With that in mind, let's consider an example. I currently work in HIV research, so let's consider the event dying by AIDS. The time of death by AIDS, I'm going to call X. And time in general, I'm going to call as I'm going to call t. So the hazard function, which is a function of time, h of t, is defined as the limit as delta t goes to zero of the probability that x is in some interval between t and t plus delta t. Condition on the event that x is bigger than t, all divided by delta t. Now, this is a rather complicated mathematical expression, so let's break this down bit by bit. First of all, on first instinct, when you're trying to define the probability of an event happening at a particular point in time, you may be tempted to define the hazard function as simply p of x is equal to t. Unfortunately, if you remember from mathematical statistics or probability theory, you'll remember that the probability of a continuous random variable equaling a particular value is equal to zero. So this definition of the hazard function is not useful to us. Instead, we can talk about the probability of an event happening at a particular interval of time. So that's why we're defining this probability of x being in some interval between t and some later time, t plus delta t. Now, you may be wondering why we're conditioning on the event x is bigger than t. Well, let's consider an example. If our patient of interest died in the year 2017, but the study started in, in the year 2019, then x is less than t. And if x is less than t, then the probability that x is in, in some interval bigger than t is equal to zero. So in other words, if our patient died before the study began, the probability of the patient dying in some interval of time after the study began is definitely zero. So we have to condition on the, on the event that the patient hasn't died yet. We have to condition on the event that x is bigger than t. We have to assume that the event hasn't happened yet. So that is why we use this conditional probability. That is why we condition on the event x is bigger than t. Now, you may be wondering why we're dividing by delta t. Well, let's consider two arbitrary time intervals, delta t being 10 and delta t being 20. Well, this probability is definitely less than this probability, or less than or equal to anyway, because this event is a subset of this event. So if we're defining the probability, if we're defining the hazard function this way, then we're saying that the intrinsic death by eight is going to get bigger if delta t gets bigger. So this definition artificially inflates the hazard if we're considering a larger delta t, which is really not useful. What we really care about at the end of the day is the intrinsic risk of dying by eight. And we don't want that to get bigger just because delta t is getting bigger. So we have to adjust for that somehow. 
And to adjust for that, we divide by delta t. We scale by delta t. And finally, you may be wondering why we're taking the limit as delta t goes to zero. Well, remember, we're trying to measure the risk of an event happening at a particular point in time. So when we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, we're going to get that probability happening in some particular infinitesimally small period of time. So that is the definition of the hazard function. Now, it's important to note that the hazard is not a probability. That is a probability on, in the numerator, but when that divides by delta t, it could get bigger than 1, which of course violates one of the Kolmogorov axioms of probability. So I hope that this video was useful to you. As always, you can visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician, to get your daily lesson on statistics, machine learning, or chemistry on weekdays. And once a week, I post a longer tutorial or advice column. And the tutorials often contain detailed explanations and examples of R programming. As well, you can follow me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.